This week on TGC News, feeding your AR from the side, a deployable ballistic shield, and brass is no longer brass. TACPAC offers some of the highest quality tactical and EDC gear in a monthly package shipped right to your door. They aren't focused on sending you a bunch of crap. They want to make sure that you get gear you will actually use, featuring things like knives, tourniquets, multi-tools, AR-15 parts, and survival gear. TACPAC is bound to have gear that you're going to love. If you order right now, you can get either a free hat or a free multi-tool by using the code TGCHAT or TGCTOOL at TACPAC.com. Welcome back to a super short episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. This week's first story is about ammunition, more specifically the brass casings that are the foundation of the modern cartridge. We've been using this concept since the later 1800s. That's what we're all used to with ammo. We've seen improvements in processing, creation, and handling of brass, but the metal itself remains the same. Well, now there's a new kid on the block that's making people think twice about calling those casings by their former name. Say hello to the Shell Shock Technologies NAS3 or NAS cubed casings. These are a two-piece design. The front where the powder and bullet would go is made of a nickel stainless steel alloy. The the case head itself is made of a nickel-plated aluminum. Shell Shock Technologies is making some really, really hefty claims that, quite frankly, make me excited but kind of skeptical. Claims include things like the cases being half the weight of brass, which kind of sounds irrelevant, but when you have thousands of these things together, it matters. Then you have claims like higher corrosion resistance, which makes sense with the alloy, and then they also claim higher internal volume, higher potential velocities, more reloads per case, no trimming required because the material doesn't stretch, the case heads can be anodized, which is cool for quick IDing on the range, and best of all, they can be picked up with a magnet. Hallelujah, rejoice, no more picking up brass bent over, just take a magnet and sweep. Amazing. This is potentially solving a few small issues with using actual brass casings. It's kind of nuts here. You know, we haven't seen this kind of improvement ever. Here's the kicker though. I bet you're probably thinking, oh, these are gonna be expensive, right? It's gonna be ridiculous. Well, currently on Midway USA, normal Starline 9mm brass is $150 per 1,000 cases. And these NAS cases are $100 for a thousand. Fifty freaking dollars less. That is huge in terms of brass. I'm struggling with this one. It's almost too good to be true, you know? The only negatives that I've seen are that the cases don't really tolerate bullets being pulled and they only come in nine mil currently. That's it. That's all I could find that was like mildly negative. I think this is going to become a serious contender if more people start adapting these and loading ammo in them and we see more and more of these come into the market. I think that's when it's going to make an impact if it's going to. These are so new that there's not really enough data to convince me that this is absolutely going to put brass to shame, but from what I've seen, it's got the best chance possible. And in weird stuff meant to help people news, mechanical engineers at BYU have devised a new ballistic shield based on origami, of all things. Essentially, this 50-pound deployable shield is meant to protect two to three people and can withstand normal handgun projectiles because of its aluminum core and 12 layers of Kevlar. According to the BYU video, current shields can weigh almost double at up to 90 pounds and typically only protect one person. This is obviously meant to change that. I think products like this are interesting because it shows a few things. First is out of the box thinking with the shape and deployment of the idea, but it also shows that first responders have not been forgotten and improvements are still being made to potentially save lives. Going into writing this segment, I was a little concerned. A while back on TGC News, I did a segment on a deployable shield called the Minuteman and it was kind of a mess. It was floppy and the material didn't really seem like the proper choice. I was hoping not to see a repeat of that. The Minuteman was only meant to protect one person and had a much different deployment method, but at the core it was a similar concept and I hoped we didn't go down that road again. The slow motion video obviously shows this thing working as intended and reports are that the FBI and similar law enforcement groups are really, really liking it so far. What do you guys think? Is this new shield going to be the next big deal in deployable ballistic protection or is it going to fold. Get it? Huh? <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you did there. 
Cleaning a gun stinks, unless you're using Breakthrough Clean's odorless and non-staining solvents and lubricants to tackle your gun cleaning needs. Be sure to check out their military grade solvent, Battle Burn Oil and Grease, or even the HP Pro for extreme conditions. If you asked and your local shop isn't carrying them, head on over to BreakthroughClean.com and use the code TGC10 to get 10% off your order. Last but certainly not least this week, California and more ingenuity from nonsense legislation. You know, recently someone said to me, why bother opening the action of the gun? Because right now you kind of have to open the gun to load it. Why not just use some sort of stripper clip and shove rounds in from the top? I thought that might be cool, but didn't really know how someone would get that done. Well, Mean Arms figured it out. This is so cool. A completely new approach than what I've seen for Cali guys. So you have your stupid low capacity magazine in the gun, you run dry, well, you shove this mean arms loader into the ejection port, stick your thumb in the loop hole that's kind of there, the thumb loop, I guess they're calling it, and you push the 10 available rounds down into the magazine and then yank the loader out. It sends the bolt forward and that's it. They also claim that if you use this with a fixed 10 round mag that you will not have to register the gun with the state of California. Now, I don't know if that's actually true or not, but it would be another great way to say, to California politicians. Now, obviously these things don't come loaded, but it's very simple. You just pop the rounds in and it just stacks nice and tight. There's no spring because it's not a magazine. This is a really cool idea executed really well. Now, here's the issue. The MSRP is $39.99 for one of these things and it won't be shipping until April. That's pretty damn expensive considering in the free states, we can get a 30 round magazine for 10 bucks a pop, but it is slightly cheaper than other options for some of the California compliant slash rebellious products on the market right now. I'll be real interested to see how these things hold up to real world use, but they do show promise in the demos that I've seen so far. And just for fun, here's that same guy shooting a machine gun one more time. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed this episode. Hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you didn't, let me know down in the comments below. Of course, if you haven't yet, please get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.